Hello and welcome back to the lecture on applied econometrics. We have been talking about types of regressor. In the previous lecture, we spoke about non-stochastic regressor and we said that that is somewhat unreal. Now, in this lecture, we are going to talk about stochastic regressor which is more close to reality. But there is a cost, right? Because the moment I talk about reality, there is more, it is going to be more complex and we are going to see the problem or the kind of challenges that we might face when you when you actually take a, a stochastic regressor instead of a non-stochastic regressor. So, to begin with, uh, what is a stochastic regressor? A stochastic regressor is a regressor that the values of the regressor is actually the values of x are values of x are drawn randomly from a population are drawn randomly from a population of finite mean from a population mean uh, from a population with finite mean with finite mean and a finite non zero variance and a finite non zero variance now what do i mean by this particularly this non zero variance so as i said the moment i say the regressor is stochastic that is my all the regressors x i is they're stochastic so i essentially allow a sort of randomness into the values of the x right so i i no longer actually determine the values of the x and give it to uh, you know the, the assign it to the x variables when i run the regression now here since i am allowing some amount of randomness if i have a non zero variance so if i have a zero variance so that would mean there is no there is no variation in the data and that would mean that the the component of randomness will go away so essentially it has to be a non zero variance okay so that is the first thing that we need to remember okay now when i say that they are stochastic they are random so then i will actually allow the regressors to actually vary together so there could be so there could be a joint probability distribution of the uh, regressors which were actually absent in the previous case in the previous case we assumed all the xi's are independent to each other and here we are allowing allowing a joint probability distribution distribution of the of the x size okay now that is a that is a really relaxation but at what cost so i'll talk about that so the moment i actually relax this what is going to happen is that you are there is, you are actually you cannot you can no longer uh, you know ignore the possibility that the x size x size are also or rather may also also be related with the error term with the error term and that is a, that is a problem so essentially in the previous case we were uh, having when we talked about the unbiasedness of the estimator of the regression estimator we were assuming that x size are required to be independent of the error term but the moment i allow the the joint probability distributions among the xi variables i also you know uh, create the possibility that xi may be sort of related to the error term okay and the moment i allow the xi and the error term to covary so at that point the bias the condition of best linear unbiased estimator might actually get violated and how is that going to happen let me actually show you so essentially what i am saying here is that i cannot say expectation of let us say some x i u i i cannot say it is equal to expectation of x i and expectation of u i okay i cannot say this or in other word i can i cannot say this is equal to 0 okay because if it has to be 0 then the expectation of u i has to be 0 and if even if expectation of u i is 0 if this condition does not hold i can never get this value right now the as i claim that because of this uh, you know because they are not independent because x i and error term are covariant 
the bias is going to exist and how the bias is going to exist. So, let me actually you know sort of derive the bias term okay, how the bias is going to come to play. Now, we know by definition that B 2 which is the estimated regression coefficient is, is equal to summation x i minus x bar into y i minus y bar divided by summation of x i minus x bar and where i is equal to let us say 1 to n okay. and this of course a whole square i equal to 1 to n. Okay. Now, if I let us say substitute the values of y i uh, what I will get is and we have actually done it previously i is equal to 1 to n x i minus x bar and here I will have let us say beta 1 plus beta 2 x 2 or beta beta 2 x i plus u i minus beta 1 minus beta 2 x bar minus u bar right. This is something we have done previously and it is of course, will be divided by the whole term i is equal to 1 to n x i minus x bar whole square i is equal to 1 to n. Okay. Now, now we know what is going to happen. So, beta 1 beta 1 is cancelled I will have a beta 2 here I will have a beta 2 here. So, what I am going to do I am going to take so let us say beta 2 out and then I will have summation i is equal to 1 to n x i minus x bar and this is also going to be x i minus x bar. So, x i minus x bar whole, whole square by summation i equal to 1 to n x i minus x bar whole square. Okay. And then I will have on the other hand I will have all this u i and u bar present. So, it is going to give me summation x i minus x bar u i minus u bar. Okay and that is divided by x i minus x bar whole square i is equal to 1 to n. Now, the first term is going to be you know this numerator and denominator cancel out. So, I will have beta. So, essentially I am going to have sorry beta 2 beta 2 plus summation of x i minus x bar into u i minus u bar divided by summation of x i minus x bar whole square and it is over all n. Okay. Now, I have actually shown previously that this could be this value could be represented as a i okay. and if I take x i minus x bar u i minus u bar over all i all n. So, then I will have something like I can actually prove this summation x i minus x bar is equal to into u i because u r is actually constant. So, basically if you multiply, so then essentially you will have u r to be you know you, you can actually take a uh, basically sum, to, sum of all the errors and that will give you a 0. So, essentially you can represent the numerator as this and let me actually write down the equation number 1, 2 and using 1 and 2 I can actually say I can actually you know or let us say this is 2 and this is 3. So, using 1, 2, 3 I can actually say this is equal to beta 2 plus summation a i u i. Okay. So, this is this, this is something that I wanted to have. Now, this is let us say this is equation 4. Now, from my equation 4, now if my now go back to the previous condition that we have seen, if the x i's are related to the error term. So, if x i's are related to the error term what will happen let me use a different color what will happen if they are related. So, if I take an expectation expectation of beta b 2 here will be expectation of beta 2 plus expectation of summation of a i u i. So, this is this is going to give you a beta 2, but this one is not going to give you a value of 0 okay? because a i and u i are they are correlated. So, they are covariant. So, as long as they are covariant you cannot write this is equal to let us say a i into expectation of u i or something like that you cannot write that. So, if you cannot write it so you and you know if you could have written that so you could have gotten the value uh, expectation of u uh, i is equal to 0, but you cannot do that now and because of that because of that you will have a bias term you will have a bias term. Uh, which is actually a problem and if you have a non stochastic regressor. So, then you do not have any problem 
So, this is for the stochastic regressor, this is for a stochastic regressor, but if it was non stochastic you could have written this is equal to a i into summation into expectation of u i okay? and that would have been 0 and then your bias term would have gone from the uh, from the uh, basically uh, estimator. Okay? Uh, so, essentially that is a problem. So, the moment you actually have this x i related correlate covariant with the error term you you actually have a bias term and the moment you have a bias term your estimator is no longer going to be a blue estimator you want a blue estimator right. So, it is not going to be a best anymore. So, that is a problem and we sort of need to actually take care of that and that is why whenever we actually deal with a stochastic regressor we make another assumption that is an uh, that is a you know there is an addition to the other assumptions that we make for uh, uh, you know uh, uh, regr uh, uh, estimating regression. So, this uh, assumptions that we are going to make is that you need to have x i and u i s are required to be independent x i s and u i s are required to be independent okay? and you write it expected value of u i given all x i is equal to 0. Okay? So, mean value of the error term given all x i is equal to 0. So, that is what you sort of assume. So, if your assumption is correct, if you can actually make this assumption, then your stochastic regressor will behave uh, in a way your non stochastic regressor actually behaves and that is why whenever you are dealing with stochastic regressor, you need to make this uh, extra assumption uh, that we have just derived. Okay? And when you do that, what you will have is you will actually have covariance of x i u i is equal to 0 okay? or also you can say expectation of u i is equal to 0. Okay? So, which are basically uh, you need to have for your regression equation. So, with this uh, we will end the lecture on stochastic regressor uh, and in the next lecture we are actually going to talk about uh, you know the assumptions that we have been dealing with from for all the past you know lectures in the second module. So, all all will, all of the, the these uh, you know the, the exercise that we have done will culminate to some uh, assumptions and we are going to talk about all the assumptions in one go. So, we will deal with the stochastic regressor and non stochastic regressor and their corresponding assumptions in the next couple of lectures. Thank you.